Hey guys, it's Dina, your Mindset Evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women, just like you and me. And hi, and welcome to the fellas as well. Thank you for joining me, Dina Jacobs, every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time here at Fly Nubian Queen. Um, I'm waiting to see if a few more people are going to join us here. But tonight, oh, there we go. And the numbers are starting to pop up. Hello, good evening. Um, go ahead and throw me in a couple of comments. Tonight we are going to continue um, on what we were speaking about last week. Um, we touched on Audra Lord's comment, her famous quote, caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. Hey, Andrea. Hi, Kamisha. So glad to see you ladies are joining us tonight. Let's really get deep into this. Caring for myself is not self-indulgence. It is self-preservation. And that is an act of political warfare. Self-care is an act of political warfare. What does that mean to you? I'd love to see some of your comments right now. I have about 50 people in here. And, I, you know, if you haven't already, please give us the thumbs up right now. Just take a second and hit that thumbs up, that love button, that like, that subscribe, that share button. I am so blessed and happy to have each and every one of you here. And I want to hear from you tonight. I'm going to get back into our interactive um, zone. I just want to touch on something while you guys are throwing your comments in there. What is self-care as an act of political warfare? What does that mean to you? How do you interpret that? Um, I want to touch on who Audre Lord is because something very interesting happened this week. Last week I put up um, information about what I was talking about last week and I was using caring for myself is not self-indulgence. I was using that quote from Audre Lord. And it came up in a group that I was in, um, specifically like a focus group about black women in the entertainment industry. And the woman who was running it, um, a very earthy sort of um, black woman who wore dashiki and smelled like beautiful oils and was burning candles and incense in this focus group. I mean, she was like a mother goddess. She brought this quote to my attention first. And then I felt it was appropriate to bring it to the attention of the Fly Nubian Queen that's here during my live streams because I really felt that it embodied a sentiment that we don't give ourselves permission often enough to partake in. Self-care for the black woman is something that has been put on the, black, the back burner. I'll say the black burner interesting um Freudian slip right it's something that has been put on the back burner for many of us even for myself at times um mental health physical health um spiritual health now is number one in my life but in a previous time it was on the back burner and I found that that was the case for a lot of my sisters a lot of my friends and even you hear more famous women talking about how they have a mental and physical spiritual breakdowns and it's because they weren't taking care of themselves they weren't they were failing to put themselves first but I also want to touch on the fact that in the news something kind of coincidental happened they say there are no coincidences in the universe but there was a story that broke this week a day after I posted um, a quote on Fly Nubian Queen, you know, just reminding people that caring for myself is not self-indulgence, it is self-preservation, and that is an act of political warfare. And I will be repeating that <laughs> again and again throughout the night and also through the, probably the next two to three live streams as we really break down what it means to care for oneself. So they said that Spelman College announced a $2 million match from philanthropist John Stryker for endowed queer studies chair named after poet and activist Audre Lorde. And this really broke out a lot of um, discussion and controversy about agendas. Um, what does this mean for Spelman College? What does this mean for the black women there? What does this mean for the community? And um, I thought it, it did generate a healthy amount of discussion. 
But one of the things that I felt was missing from a lot of the discussions is who is Audre Lorde? And so I just want to touch on that a little bit so that we can understand who Audre is um, in a broad context, okay? Um, Audre Lorde, according to poetryfoundation.org, is a self-described, quote, black, lesbian, mother, warrior, poet. Audre Lorde dedicated both her life and her creative talent to confronting and addressing injustices of racism, sexism, classism, and homophobia. According to Google, Audre Lorde was an American writer, feminist, womanist, librarian, and civil rights activist. As a poet, she is best known for technical mastery and emotional expression, as well as her poems that express anger and outrage at civil and social injustices she observed throughout her life. At one point, she was married to Edwin Rollins and has two kids with him. She passed in 1992. Now that's according to Google. The Audre Lorde papers are one of the most significant among special collections in the, in the Spelman archives. And now we bring it back to that headline. Spelman College announces $2 million match from philanthropist John Stryker for endowed queer studies chair named after poet and activist Audre Lorde. Now, there is a listing here as a self-described, quote, black. That's the first thing she lists herself as, is black. The second thing she lists herself is as lesbian. The third thing she lists herself is as mother. The fourth thing she lists herself as is a warrior. And the fifth thing she lists herself as is as a poet. This is her self-describing according to poetryfoundation.org. So I would just say, as I touch on this very briefly, my two cents on this um, philanthropy, this $2 million match for endowed queer st studies is that we remember that she self-identified first as a black woman, second as a lesbian, then as a mother, a warrior, and a poet. So although we are receiving as a community in the school of Spelman, we are receiving an endowment that wants to focus on queer studies. We must also remember as black women and people who are connected with Spelman, et cetera, in that community that we are identifying, we have the self-determination to self-identify as we choose. And if we are going to follow in the footsteps, the chair is going to be named after poet and activist Audre Lorde. If we're going to follow in her footsteps, then she is setting the example that we are identifying as black first. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Love and light to everybody out there. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. That is my opinion. And that is my interpretation. I just wanted to share that with you. And now we're going to move on to self-care and the black woman. Black women and self-care is an act of political warfare. Yes, I am inspired by Audre Lorde. I, I looked into some of her quotes. I want to share some more of those with you. And I also want to get into some of your comments. Kanisha Kirst says, self-love can be conflicting to self. If you are not aware of your position, I'm going to say that she meant your position in life, but she didn't put the word your in. So, Kanisha, if I'm misinterpreting you, please, by all means, correct me. But I like what she's saying here. Self-love can be conflicting to self if you are not aware of position in life. We're going to touch on that. Matter of fact, you might make me skip ahead um, a little bit. So there is an article on self-acceptance. And I did, again, if you guys want to check these out later, I did put the links up here in the Fly Nubian Queen um, underneath the description for this video. Um, first of all, you know, I always like to start with a definition just so we can make sure that we're all on the self -page, same page. So self-care, the practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. So in the healthcare field, self-care is described as any necessary human regulatory function, which is under individual control, deliberate, and self-initiated. 
Let's hit that again. Concerning health care, self care is any necessary, meaning essential, human regulatory function which is under individual control, deliberate, which means intent, intentional, and self-initiated, which means it's driven from within, right? So going back to Audre Lorde's quotes, right? And even touching back on the John Stryker thing, the master's tools will never dismantle the master's house. Also, she says, without community, there is no liberation. She also says in another quote that I love, we have to consciously study how to be tender with each other until it becomes a habit. And I want to say that that is probably one of my gu uh, guiding quotes and why I try to come to you guys with so much love and openness and forgiveness and healing and, and non-judgment is because I do believe that we have to consciously study, as, as Audra says, how to be tender with each other in our community as a community of women. And not from any type of, you know, sexual way or anything like that. Our boundaries are intact, right? But coming to you in a conscious way to be open and empathetic and sympathetic in a way that creates a bonding, a mutuality, an understanding, a sisterhood amongst us so that we can get on code about the things that we want, the vision that we share for our community. I really like this the thinking of this woman just based on some of the quotes that I read through. And I would encourage you guys to just simply Google Audre Lorde quotes so that you can begin to get to get to know this uh, sister, one of our ancestors, that they're going to be naming um, a queer studies program after. Because to me, she was definitely uh, identified as, as queer, but she first identified as black. And she has a lot of amazing thoughts about what it is like to be a black woman and how we should move forward and how we interact with each other, as well as how we identify ourselves and take control of that and how we interact with the world. So self-care, let's get into a history of self-care. There was a really great article that was written by um, Aisha Harris, where she kind of, you know, touches upon some of the history of self-care self within the women's movement, as well as within the black uh, community and our civil rights movements. And so I just want to read a couple things from there. But before I do, let me check and see what you guys have for your quotes. And again, if you haven't already, please hit the like, the subscribe, the share button. Um, maybe there's someone out there who would really benefit from hearing a little bit more and learning about um, self-care as a black woman. So the other thing, let me see, I just want to adjust that a little bit. Um, we have Romel Harris says, share. Thank you, Romel. Romel is tuning in from Chicago. I appreciate that. Um, and then Felicia Adair says, I'm going to share this. I was trying to tell people about it, and they didn't listen or care. Well, thank you for sharing it. I think it will reach the right people at the right time. And even the fact that you're putting it forward um, gives the opportunity for that person to come to it when they're spiritually ready. Because you do have to be kind of ready on the inside to receive some of this information that I'm bringing to you. Um, so, A History of Self-Care. Now, this is from Aisha Harris at Slate.com. It wasn't until the rise of the women's movement and the civil rights movement that self-care became a political act. Again, keep Audre Lorde's quote in mind. Women and people of color viewed controlling their health as a corrective to the failures of a white patriarchal medical system to properly tend to their needs. Self-care was quote, a claiming of autonomy over the body as a political act against institutional, technocratic, very racist, and sexist medicine. Quote, Natalia Melman Pertzzella, an assistant professor at the New School, currently writing a book about the history of American fitness culture. Um, as Jennifer Nelson wrote in her book, 
More Than Medicine, A History of the Feminist Women's Health Movement, a push to redefine healthcare beyond just treatment of the individual body gain seen within various movements in the 60s. Activists saw that poverty was correlated with poor health, and they argued that in order to dismantle hierarchies based upon race, gender, class, and sexual orientation, those groups must be able to live healthy lives. Now let's just catch that really quickly. We're talking about poverty, okay? Activists saw that poverty was correlated with poor health. Now let's be honest with ourselves here. Is it more or less likely that women in a higher upper class um, tax bracket are more likely to take care of themselves than those who are in the middle to the lower class tax bracket. Nine times out of 10, we're gonna say yes. And a lot of times this has to do with the fact that you don't feel secure in your situation. So you don't feel like you even have time to breathe because a lot of your mental space is being taken up by how you're going to generate income and take care of your basic needs. And when your basic needs are not taken care of, then how in the world are you going to begin to focus on yourself, especially if you have children or you have family members that you're taking care of? And some of us are very focused on taking care of the community that is impoverished. Even if you're, you yourself are not impoverished, you might be focused on taking care of an impoverished community that you feel connected to. So you're down volunteering, you're at the church on the weekends and the weekdays. But let me help you ladies understand Self-care is the strongest and best act of political warfare. It's the best strategic move that we can make towards regaining our throne, reclaiming our throne as queens. Because if we are worn down and torn up and broken as women, because we've allowed society to continue to use us in the way that they have ever since the days of slavery. It might be, we may not be in shackles and getting whipped every single day, but we're still undergoing a lot of emotional, a lot of mental stress due to the imaging, the media, um, the different things that are going on politically. There's a lot that we are still dealing with as black women, not to mention the negative programming. So what I'm saying to you today, ladies and gentlemen, is that self-care, caring for oneself, putting yourself first. Ladies, I'm giving you permission. If you need someone outside of yourself to give you permission, then I, Dana Jacobson, here to do it with love, healing, and forgiveness. It is time for you to put yourself first. It is time for you to take care of yourself mentally, physically, spiritually, holistically, Ladies, it is time to forgive yourselves. It is time to love yourselves completely. It is time for us to accept ourselves as individuals and as a collective in all our glory, in all of our faults, in everything of who we are, our history, our past, our present, and what we project into the future. We must love it all. We must accept it all. We must care for it all. And that is the strongest act of political warfare, in my view, because that makes us invincible. When you love yourself, it forms the boundary. And last week we were speaking about boundaries. Self-care is the boundary that is impenetrable to any force of negativity. When you love yourself, when you care for yourself, when you put yourself first, then nothing can touch you in a way that is permanently damaging. Something may touch you for a moment, but because you love yourself, you respect yourself, and you accept yourself and hold yourself in high esteem, it will only be a moment of injury before you already start reformulating, reworking, and you push back that energy. 
you you reject that energy and you send it back to that person or those entities that have pushed it out to you. And you can only do that from a strong foundation of self-care. So let's get a little bit deeper into what that is. And please, by all means, if, if you agree, if you disagree, if you want to add something to that, please, I'd love to see your comments. And again, I want to say thank you so much for joining me, Dina Jacobs, live here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women. If you have not gone to Fly Nubian Money, you should definitely go check that out because one of the things that is important with self-care is having your finances together, understanding how to make your money work for you. If you haven't gone to flynubianbusiness.com, now you know black women, we have some really amazing and um, creative ways to make money. Uh, we have all kinds of ideas, whether it be our hair, our makeup, our clothes, jewelry, even uh, technology. We've come up with some amazing technology, technological advancements or hacks or etc. You can make money from that. So you should go check out flynubianbusiness.com so you can learn a little bit more about how to start and grow your business. Now let's get back into this. Okay, so uh, getting back into the article of A History of Self-Care by Aisha Harris on Slate.com, she says the women's lip movement, of course, took cues from the civil rights movement. You know they always borrowing from us, right? We are the uh, innovators, and that's something that we should love about ourselves that we're able to innovate and we inspire so many movements right um so the women's lib movement of course took cues from the civil rights movement in many ways and as nelson points out this was especially true with healthcare. civil rights leaders had made healthcare a priority with martin luther king jr saying quote of all the forms of inequality injustice in health is the most shocking and the most inhumane, end quote. The Black Panther Party carried this idea forward. Alondra Nelson chronicles the Panthers' efforts on this front in her book, Body and Soul, which opens with the Black Community Survival Conference held in Oakland, California in 1972, quote, a rally, street fair, and block party, end quote, in which speeches were given and information distributed about the party's free community service programs. Now, I want to stop there for just a moment. Because this wonderful young lady, Aisha Harris, has done, done some amazing research, and I, I put the link up there so that you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, can go and read through this. You should understand what the history of self-care has been in relation to political warfare or activism, however you want to look at it, and see the connections that she makes um, during the Civil Rights Movement. Because MLK was talking about this, um, the Nation of Islam, the Black Panthers, that was a point in time when the men in our community uh, and the women in our community were getting together and they were saying, you know what, we cannot look to the greater society to care for us because as MLK said, the injustice in health is the most shocking and most inhumane, end quote, right? MLK said this. And so what did they do? Uh, the Black Panthers, uh, the Nation of Islam, et cetera, the Black Church at the time, they were the ones going out into community and feeding the children. They were going out and clothing the children. They were doing the protecting. They were um, bringing in doctors. I know the Black Panther Party was bringing in doctors and, and opening up uh, you know, community health clinics. That's, I think their example is why we have so many health clinics in our communities now. Now, are they in our interest today? Debatable, debatable. But I do feel like they forged um, new territory in opening up community clinics to where, that were focused in on our communities and the needs of our communities at that time. And so again, that is a form of community self-care, making sure that those members of the community who were not able to be treated or who were being discriminated against or who were being experimented on or who felt uncomfortable because of the history of torture and experimentation that had taken place on black people. They didn't feel comfortable going to a doctor, but they still had things that needed to be addressed. And so the members of the community who had the wherewithal to pull that together and the connections, they did that in an effort to create 
better self-care for those in the community. And that's something that we can look to after we put ourselves first and first take care of ourselves as individuals. That is an example that we can look to as a community of women. We can look at the history of what the Black Panthers did and we can say, you know what, how do we get that going in our community today where we are in control of our health care, where we again are in control of the um, community health centers and it's not the government okay how do we do that i know we have plenty of black doctors and nurses etc maybe there's an opportunity for them to volunteer their time or there's an opportunity or a way that we can get funding from within the community to have self-funded health care clinics um, these are just ideas and things to think about in the larger picture but again i want to bring it back down to the macro level of self-care as an individual Okay, so I'm just going to finish up this quote. These nationwide clinics recruited nurses, doctors. That's exactly what I was saying. Um, probably because I read this earlier. I'm not going to say that was an original idea <laughs> by any means. These nationwide clinics recruited nurses, doctors, and students to test for illnesses and diseases, ramp, diseases rampant within the black community, including lead poisoning and sickle cell anemia, as well as to provide brace, basic preventative care for black people and especially black women. This kind of self-care was brought to fill a desperate need. A desperate need. I would even say that we have a, I don't like the word desperate, but I want to say that we definitely have a pressing need in today's society for Black women to again put themselves first. Put yourself first, sister. What does that mean? Can I just ask? I don't see a lot of comments right now, but I want to ask for those of you who are watching, what does it mean to put yourself first? Like, I want you to think about this for a moment. Take a second and just ask yourself, what does it mean to put myself first? Do you feel guilty? Allow yourself to feel what you're going to feel. Do you feel guilt? Do you feel shame? Do you feel excitement? Do you feel joy? Do you feel any pain? Do you feel conflicting emotions about it? This is a safe space for you to talk about those things, okay? Um, so another quote from Audre Lorde is, we must be the change we wish to see in the world. We must be the change we wish to see. So black women, we're going back to boundaries and we're going back to what does self-care do for us as an act of political warfare? Putting ourselves first and caring for ourselves in a way that makes us happy, healthy, and whole is an act of political warfare because it demonstrates to the larger society how we will be treated, how we will accept being treated. It sets the tone for the respect that we deserve. It sets the tone for the boundaries we have in place for what we will not be accepting. It sets the tone for being handled delicately. It sets the tone for shifting in how we're being perceived how we're being portrayed in society by putting ourselves first it lets others know that we want to be prioritized and we will accept nothing less than being a priority in whatever situation we're in by respecting ourselves it lets others know in the larger society that we as black women will accept no disrespect we will only accept respect and respect will be due from the moment we enter the room and also after we leave the room too. Putting ourselves first by taking care of our health and eating healthy and honoring our bodies and what we put into it will let the larger society know that when they put that chicken joint or that uh, Chinese food corner store with all that junk food and all that foolishness into our neighborhood, they will actually lose money because we will refuse to patronize anything that doesn't uplift us and help us to keep our bodies 
in the best possible shape and tone. Because we are demonstrating how we want to be treated and that we will accept nothing less because we're showing and demonstrating that by how I treat myself, how you treat yourself, how we treat each other. That is how self-care is an act of political warfare. And guess what? We didn't even lift a finger, honey. We didn't even get involved in a physical fight. Because <laughs> I'm not about to be out here trying to fight no man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? In the street or be at a rally. I, I'm not really that type of person anymore. There was a point in time when I used to go to rallies and all that kind of stuff. I don't do that anymore because what I realized is through some of these studies and these teachings and the different things I was um, doing to work on myself to improve myself and heal myself and get right with self, I started to realize through people like Audre Lorde and others that me taking care of me and me honoring me and me respecting me and me getting right with me as a black woman, me, 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 we're not allowed to do that. We're not allowed to be focused on us. We're, we're out here focusing on everybody else. Ever since the days of slavery, being somebody's mammy, we nursing somebody else's children. Then after slavery ended, we were in there being their maid, cleaning up their house, couldn't even clean up our own. And then because of the broken homes and broken families during the crack era, Big Mama and them done took in everybody else's kids. And now she's bloated. She's, you know, stressed out. She's got diabetes. She's got all these things because she's not tending to herself. That stops here. That stops with this generation. That's over for us because we, I value myself. And I want to hear you say it. Type it in there. You value yourself. I put myself first. I want to hear you ladies say it. And you gentlemen, I put myself first. I deserve the best that life has to offer. I am a black woman. I am the most brilliantly beautiful, gifted being that this world has ever known. And I deserve the best that life has to offer. And I will accept no less. If we're going to call ourselves queens, then we need to act accordingly. Take time out to meditate. Take time out. You know, you can be picky about what you put in your body. And that goes for all the smoking weed and the drinking and all that stuff, too. Now, I'm not a funny daddy. I like to have fun. You go out, you have a little fun here and there. But be respectful to yourself. There's no need to get trashed and be laying out in the gutter. There's no need to... Be, to be smoking weed until you can't get up off the couch. Take a little puff. You know, set some parameters for yourself. Once a week, twice a week, something of that nature. If you're smoking all throughout the day, see if you can get it down to once a day. Then see if you can get it down to every few days. And then see if you can get it down to every once in a while just to have some fun and blow a little steam off. That should not be your go-to thing for self-care because that is not self-care, that is self-medication. And self-medication is a temporary fix for something that is deeper that you need to go and deal into yourself and deal with. If you're stressed out, okay, you might want to have a little drink to take the edge off, but let's not forget to address the thing that is stressing you out and figure out why it's stressing you. What is the trigger? And then you dismantle that trigger so that those things no longer bother you. Okay. Let's see if we have some more comments in here. Yes, we do. Hey, Jane, with a big heart. Love you too, sis. Um, Helen D., I feel good to take care of self first. And Helen D., congratulations to you. Put yourself first. Does it feel good? It feels so good when I, you know, I put off having a spa day. And what uh, a friend of mine inspired me, she used to make sure she had a spa day at least once a month. Even if it's you giving yourself a spa day in the house where you have to tell other people, look, 
I'm doing me for the next four hours and you go and you get in that bathtub and light some candles and you do your nails and you soak and you listen to your whoever you like to listen to positive music or anything that's going to uplift you maybe you put on some old school India RE and celebrate your brown skin and all that kind of stuff whatever it is that you need to do she inspired me she always set um, one day a month where she would go to the spa and out in here in LA they have these things called Korean spas and they're only about I think you can get a body scrub and stay in the in the spa all day for about somewhere between 40 and 60 dollars I mean it's super cheap right um, and she just would do that once a month and I was like oh my god you know what she's right so I started trying to do that and honestly I haven't been on top as on as on top of it as I normally would be um, but that's something that we have to do and that's something that I got to get back into even things like taking the time out to get your nails and your toes done yes that is self-care anytime you can go somewhere and relax now if you're going to one of those busy overcrowded places where they're they got you know four three four girls working on you at one time because they just trying to do turnover that may not be as relaxing but I did find out about a place called Namaste Nails Namaste Nails, which is black-owned franchise, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can definitely uh, fact-check me on that out here in L.A. Um, that's the place that I go to, and it is very, again, it's called Namaste, right? And it is very quiet, relaxing. They got tea. They got crystal-infused water. And I sit in there for an hour and a half and just zone out and relax while they do my nails. My, and that's my me time. Yes, those things are necessary. And there should be no guilt or shame around them because who is going to treat you better than you treat yourself? No one. Because most of the time, people who don't treat themselves well don't even know how to receive it when someone else comes along who tries to, to show them a better way to be, a better way to treat themselves. Most of the time, people who don't, really love themselves, accept themselves, and care for themselves, end up pushing those people away because they don't feel they deserve it. Is that present in our community, ladies? Sometimes I would say yes. Sometimes I say that there are segments of our community of women who demonstrate a lack of self-care. They're not putting themselves first. They're putting what society is saying first. So let me get into your comments a little bit more. And thank you for that comment again, Helen D. Tim Bailey says, Shalom, daughter of Zion. Hey, Shalom. <laughs> thank you, um, Bree Westbrook. I put myself first. I value myself. Yes, sister. I love that. Chardonnay Monet says, I value myself. I put myself first. Yes. Honey, I deserve the best life has to offer. I will accept nothing less. Yes, if you make that your mantra, ladies, let's make that our mantra. Come up with your own mantras if something resonates with you more. But yes, I put myself first. I value myself. I love myself. I forgive myself. I am the best this world has to offer. And we're talking about something different uh, between... And I wanted to bring this up because I think this is a good point. There is a difference between what um, some of us may come to know is um, arrogance versus self-esteem. So arrogance is an outer thing. It's comparing yourself to others and being like, oh, I'm better than these people or I did more than this person. I accomplished more. That's different. This is not about being arrogant. This is about self-esteem. So self-esteem is, is the inner work, right? Arrogance is the outer projection. Self-esteem is the inner work of self-love and self-confidence. Self-confidence, right? So Chardonnay Monet says, I love, I value myself. I put myself first. I deserve the best life has to offer. I will accept nothing less. I want to see more of you. We have a few more ladies in here. Please type that in. I want to see all of us saying that to ourselves. And I want to witness that for you right now. Chardonnay Monet says, it's so difficult finding that, ba that balance as a single mother. Chardonnay, my love, the balance is that you are demonstrating to your children how to care for themselves and value themselves. So when you take time out for yourself to put yourself first, 
And I bet you know, you're doing a lot, I'm sure, from what you're saying here. You're probably doing a lot for your kids and your family and to make sure that they're cool, right? But one of the things I want you to, to think about is what does it mean to be a single mother? I think a lot of times women associate being a single mother with struggling and, and oh, I don't have enough time. I got to do this. I got to do that. So what I'm going to say to you, Chardonnay, is I want you to take, start off with an hour. Start off with an hour a week for the first two weeks. Then I want you to take it to an hour a day. An hour a day. And then I want you to find at least a half a, a half a day per week after a month. A half a day per week, somewhere between two to four hours that you can just do you. Because you have to demonstrate for your children how to put themselves first. So if you want to look at it like that, like you're so focused on your children, then look at it from that perspective that I have to demonstrate for my children how to put themselves first, how to value themselves, how to take care of their needs and make sure that your needs as a mother are taken care of so that you can be there to see your grandchildren. I hope that helps. So let's get back into a little bit more of what is it with self-care? So Audre Lorde says for black women as well as black men, it is axiomatic okay axiomatic now you know she went there with that word axiomatic means self-evident or unquestionable so her quote is for black women as well as black men it is unquestionable unquestionable that if we do not define ourselves for ourselves we will be defined by others for their use and to our detriment. Again, for black women as well as black men, it is axiomatic or self-evident that if we do not define ourselves for ourselves, we will be defined by others. And we know who others are. For their use and to our detriment. And this touches on, again, when we were speaking before about stereotypes, the angry black woman syndrome, uh, the mammy, the Jezebels, all those type of stereotypes that we have out there. That's when we allow others to define us as black women. But when we are taking care of ourselves, we are self-determining. We are defining, I, Dina Jacobs, and defining who I am for myself. And I'm doing that through my ther therapy sessions, through my reading, through my yoga, through all the different things that I do that please me and fulfill me as a woman, as a black woman here on this earth at this time. I am defining me. I am pushing back, again, pushing back with the boundary of self-love, the self-love radiates from within me outward to create that boundary to where the things that are going on in the larger society cannot touch me in the same way that they used to. That is the act of political warfare. That, dare I say, is the, that's the death blow to them. That's the death blow to racism. Because if you don't allow those stereotypes to hold dominion over you any longer because you are self-determining, you are defining who you are, and you're retraining society how to treat you, that may be the death blow to some of these systems that are in place. And guess what? You didn't even lift a finger. You just at the spa. <laughs> I love the concept of that. I have to say praise to the ancestor Audre Lorde for, you know, putting that out there because that just makes me feel so, I don't know about you ladies, but that makes me feel so much better about taking that spa day, about saying no, thank you to certain things that I am not willing to participate in and to just, you know, overall putting myself first. 
You know, think about that as a code of conduct in the community where you're honoring your body and you're honoring your mind, you're honoring your spirit, you're honoring your time on this earth. That's a currency. You're honoring your attention. Your, your attention and your time are connected and you're honoring that valuable asset that is non-replaceable by choosing you're very selective as a as a community of women we're selective where we're going to put our attention we're not necessarily going to put our attention at that movie that came out that doesn't depict uh black women in the best light we're not going to put our attention on that new song with booties popping all over the world all over the place we've seen enough of that it's time for a new image you know where we pay our attention to, it's a currency. Attention is connected to your time. When you're paying your attention to something, that is time that you don't get back. That's why we have to put ourselves first. Because when we put our attention on ourselves, we're paying into ourselves. And we're building this up and infusing and investing into ourselves, our individual selves, as the greatest and most valuable asset. Dare I say, Black women are the greatest asset to this country and have been since the first days that they brought us here. So what if we decided to become the greatest assets to ourselves? That is the chess move. That is the act of political warfare from my interpreta interpretation. That's the chess move that we're making, ladies. As queens on that chess board, I want that to sink in. And please, if you have any comments, again, I want to say thank you so much for joining me, Dina Jacobs Live, here every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Time and 10 p.m. Eastern Time here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women on Facebook and YouTube. And also, I think we have um, a podcast on iTunes that I would love for you to check out. And if you can and love to get some of our gear and support us that way, please go to ShopFNQ.com. That's shopfnq.com. And for text alerts and updates, please text the word queens to 31996. That's 31996. So we're going to start to wrap this up a little bit. Now I want to get into self-acceptance, right? Because when we look at the three ways, okay, we're looking at, um, hold on, let me go back. I love talking about this with you ladies. I just have to say, like, it is so much fun to get into these things because I feel like it's so empowering. And it connects me with you. And it's 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 my way of showing love back to the community and also showing love to myself because I'm learning right along with you. I'm I'm here going on this journey with you and sharing a lot of the things that I'm discovering as I am um in therapy and also um growing as a as a person, as a human being, and as a beautiful black queen. So Let's see, areas of self-care. We have the mental, we have the physical, and we have the spiritual. So in this particular video, in this talk, we're really getting into the mental, right? So the mental, there are three ways to increase self-acceptance because self-acceptance is a key, is, a, is one of the biggest keys to unlock self-care, right? You have to take care of your mental. When your mental is right, then you can get into the physical, and then you can go in to the depths of your spiritual and do that battle that you may need to do internally to get those demons in check. You feel me? So let's start off with mental. There are three ways to increase self-acceptance. Now, self-acceptance as black women is huge. And I may have to, um, you know, continue this into a part two of this video because I see we're, get, we're getting close to 8 p.m. But let me touch on it for you now. And again, the link is in the description here. Mental, three ways to increase self-acceptance. One, self-regulation. Two is self-awareness. And three is self-transcendence. And that one is huge because I believe, like according to what Dr. Um, Cheryl Tawetty Grill said about, you know, the lie, the myth of black inferiority, I think is creating a split personality within some of us black women and maybe in the collective of us as black queens because on the one hand we're like i'm a queen i'm a black woman i built this country i am the mother of this place you know i can do it all black girl magic and all that and on the flip side we feel like 
you know, we're inferior. We feel like we're double negative, some of us. Some of us are feeling like we're nappy-headed hoes or, or hood rats or ratchet or, you know, all these negative images. And they're in conflict with the positive images and they're existing inside of us and they're at war. And so self-transcendence is a key to that. So again, I'm going to touch on these things, but I do think there's probably going to be some time for us to get back into it and talk about it a little bit deeper. So there's a great article that was written in the uh, Harvard, www.health.harvard.edu. It's called Greater Self-Acceptance Improves Emotional Well-Being. And um, some of us got a little tootinal over there. Some of us are a little tootinal, got that attitude. We're angry, we're upset. We're overweight, we're, you know, we got all these health conditions um, that we're dealing with, and we're just not feeling good. And so self-acceptance improves our emotional well-being, which starts to clear out all that, that toxicity so that we can take better care of ourselves. And this was written by S. Remy, Sereni Pile um, on May 16th of 2016. Self-acceptance is, is an individual's acceptance of all of his or her attributes, positive or negative. So we have to accept ourselves. We have to accept that this duality exists within the black woman's uh, image of herself, so to speak. Some of us are seeing ourselves as both negative and positive. We have to accept this and acknowledge this, and that's where we can begin to move forward. So according to this article, it says it includes body acceptance self-protection from negative criticism so again when i talk about choosing what we pay attention to that is a form of self-protection from negative criticisms because some of this music we're listening to is a negative criticism a negative projection onto us as black women and according to this article believing in one's capacities we need to really believe in ourselves we say a lot of great things about what ourselves and what we're capable of but do we truly as a community believe it many people have low self acceptance there can be many reasons for this but one widely accepted theory is that because we develop our self-esteem in part from others appreciating us now think about this. In part, we're developing our self-esteem as a collective, as a community, from others appreciating us. Have we been appreciated by the larger society as a whole, historically? All the things we've contributed? I think it's safe to say the answer is probably no. It's looking like the answer is no. So he's saying there can be many reasons for this, but one widely accepted theory in the health, uh, mental health community is that because we develop our self-esteem in part from others appreciating us, people with low self-acceptance may have had parents or slave owners, in our historical case, right, who lacked empathy during those times or if it was our parents this was a learned behavior from handed down through generational curses who lacked empathy during our childhood now I can say that my mom lacked a little bit of empathy during my childhood so that gave me low self-acceptance at different times in my life now consequently in their adult lives they may need much stronger affirmation from others than most do and do we find that as a community, as a community of women, do we find that we're looking for affirmation from our men? We're looking for stronger affirmations from the, the greater society. We're looking for, for all this outside validation. Well, we don't see ourselves here. Well, we don't see ourselves portrayed in this movie. Or we don't see ourselves, well, where are we in that ad? Or where? That's looking for it outside of ourselves. So he's saying, in other words, ordinary levels of approval do not move the needle on, on our self-esteem if we're looking for it and seeking it for, you know, so strongly from the outside. So again, in this article, he's saying some people with low self-acceptance try to bolster it by accomplishing great things. So you know how some of us overwork ourselves at work? 
because we're trying to get over our double negative and how they looking at us and I'm black and, 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 and you know I gotta work twice as hard. Remember we were talking about that? That shows low self-acceptance. So now I'm a person that I don't work twice as hard on anything. I work at the level that I need to, to push myself forward, to achieve and exceed my personal best, but I do not try to outwork the next MFs, if you know what I mean, just because, simply because I'm a black woman and they're going to think I'm lazy. And you know, sometimes I have to go to battle in my mind on that. Because sometimes in the industry that I work in, they want me to do men's work and I have to let them know that Oh my God, that is so heavy. That's too heavy for me. And I feel okay with that because I am a woman and I'm taking care of myself. I'm no one's workhorse. And I would give that to you ladies as well. You're not a workhorse. You are a woman. And if you do dare to claim that you are a queen, it is okay for you to say, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, that's not for me. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. But no, thanks. Please, with a smile, right? So we have to let people know that we accept ourselves as we are, as women, as beautiful feminine women, right? And we don't have to overwork ourselves trying to accomplish all these things to prove to the greater society that we are worth something. Because you know what? Our ancestors already did that. Look at America. Look at all the great things that America has done. We built that. We're, our ancestors are responsible for that. So we can now relax and do what needs to be done, and we don't have to work ourselves to death anymore. That is part of us accepting ourselves and our greatness and, and starting to like close the gap between those that duality of not being good enough and being queens, being ratchet gutter hoes and being these queens, right? But this only helps your self-esteem for a while, right? That's because achievement, okay, so he's talking about achievement. He's saying that overachievement only helps your self-esteem for a while, and that's because achievement is a poor substitute for intimacy. In addition, these people are often under the impression that taking it when suffering is the main reflection of their value. Now, I want us as black women to hear this loud and clear. Dr. Pillay is saying that in addition, these people are often under the impression that taking it when suffering is the main reflection of their value. Have we as black women not been told over and over and over and over again by the society that, oh my God, you're so strong. You said you're a strong black woman. You can handle it. That is their way of projecting onto us that we are workhorses and we're strong and we can take the suffering. And we're good at suffering. And I'm here to say no more. No, I'm sorry. I'm not your war host. And I have told many a white woman. I have even had to tell some of my sisters who come up to me and be like, but you're so strong. And I'm saying, no, I'm not. I'm delicate. Mm -mm, honey, I can't handle all that. That is too much for me. And then I start sniffling and getting some of those, you know, those little Becky tears to pop out. <laughs> I'd be like, Oh my God, I mean, I feel so, oh my gosh. Like I, I let, you know, that damsel in distress just come right on out to the forefront. And that is part of me accepting me as a woman, that I am a delicate flower. That I could break a nail trying to lift something heavy. That yes, I do have a certain amount of um, resiliency as a black woman. But I am not going to be under the impression that me over here suffering is somehow increasing my value. Because if we are honest with ourselves, lady, our suffering is only diminishing us. Our willingness to continue to suffer under these projected image, images of our own, of our black inferiority, us continuing to hold on to that. It's killing us and it's diminishing our value. We cannot be prideful. We cannot be 
We cannot be the beautiful, amazing, the brilliant, gifted beings. We cannot be, you know, high value women. We cannot be worth it and deserving if we're over here doing all, you know, taking on all this suffering. There's nothing beautiful about it. There's nothing sexy about it. And it's not gaining empathy. It's not gaining empathy for us. Now he says in this article, it's hard for them to believe in genuine caring. And when it does come their way, they are suspicious of it. And I can say that, you know, some of us are, are very suspicious when someone comes along and they're trying to help the community. And that's because, again, of the history. And so um, I really, really encourage you to go in and click the link for this and read through it. Greater self-acceptance improves emotional well-being by Sirin, Srini, I don't know how to say his name because it's a S-R-I-N-I, Pele, and this is on the healthharvard.eu edu website um i put the link there ladies please go check it out um we're gonna get into part two three four and five of this self-care as political warfare because i do think this is one of our strongest weapons and it al and it allows us to maintain and resonate and vibrate within our femininity and i don't know how you ladies feel but i feel that masculinity has been projected onto us um, in our community very heavy-handedly and this goes way back 400 and something years ago when they wanted us to you know give birth and get up and still tend the field and nurse everybody kids and all that that is a lot on a woman that's a lot on a woman and um, it takes a lot of strength and a lot of energy and we have to conjure up some of our masculine energy to get through all of that and what I'm saying now is this is the time that we can fall back into our femininity and we don't have to feel guilty or ashamed of that because as Audre Lorde said, self-preservation is an act of political warfare. So I'm going to encourage us to continue to take up arms to build our arsenal by caring for ourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. And as we did touch on the mental, which we're going to increase our self-acceptance through self-regulation, self-awareness, and self-transcendence, we're going to get even deeper into that next week. So I invite you to join me, again, Dina Jacobs, here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women just like you and me. I love you all so much. And I thank you, and I truly appreciate you for being here with me. Before I go, I am going to read the last few comments if I can get to them. Hold on, ladies. I don't know how to get to the comments now. <laughs> it won't let me. I wanted to read your comments. Let me see um, if I can. Uh... Jesus, I don't know how to do it. I'm trying. Um, if I can get to it, I'll try to read your comments right before I go. Um, and if I cannot then um, I apologize. Hey, do you know how to get to these comments? Mario? Yes. Do you know how to get to these comments? Sure. That's what I'm trying to do, but it's not showing. Oh, hold on. I figured it out. I figured it out, ladies. All right. Okay, so let me get to your comments real quick. Okay, so Helen D says, I deserve the best. I did read that one already, Helen. Okay, Lavinia Duncanson says, this is something I needed to hear. It's 3 a.m. in the UK. For some reason, I woke up and this video came up on my phone. Thank you. Let's just praise God on that one. All, all the love and the praise goes to the creator. Lavinia, I am so blessed to be able to deliver this message to you and I'm so glad that you were able to receive it at the time that you needed to receive it that means a lot to me I'm so happy that you're here um please join me continue to join me and if you can go on to flymovingqueen.com on Facebook there's a playlist there Dina Jacobs mindset evolutionary there may be some other videos there that you would uh you would get something from too but I'm, I'm so happy for you beautiful keep up the great work and continue to grow and I love you and I'm so happy for you uh, nosy 
Sib Sibangile Yingwane. Hi, thank she says, thank you for this good morning. My morning is blessed. Absolutely, you are so blessed, dear. You are a beautiful, brilliant, gifted being, blessed black woman, queen. Move forward and take care of yourself. Put yourself first, sister. Um, let's see, Marie Copeland. I love you all who represent Fly Nubian Queen here from Virginia, and I love you too, Marie. Thank you for being here with us. I'm sure I can speak on behalf of most of the queens here that we love that you guys are here all the time with us. Helen D says, right. Helen D is clapping her hands. Um, let's see. And Nozi Simbogile Yingwane. I'm sorry I'm butchering your name, but um, she says, hello. She says, hey, twin. And I said, hey, back to you guys. Well, thank you so much again, ladies, for being here. Um, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week. Um, this week and please feel free to hit me up on social media you can follow me on Instagram at, at Dina Jacobs flaunts that's D-E-E-N-A-J-A-C-O-B-S Dina Jacobs on um, Instagram on Twitter also you can um, follow me on Jakarta artist on uh, Facebook or you can go to Dina Jacobs um, excuse me Dina Jacobs fan page here on um, Facebook and thank you please continue to give me the thumbs up the likes the shares the subscribes here um, I will continue this talk next week we're going to get deeper into self acceptance as a form of self care thanks a lot and um, I'll see you guys soon Mwah. good night <laughs>